Hello everyone, it's Adam here. In today's video, we're gonna be adding a center stand to the F750GS. And you're probably thinking, doesn't the F750 and F850 come with a center stand? <laughs> well, it does if you have a standard suspension model, but if you have the low model, there's no center stand. It's equipped for one, but doesn't come with one. And so uh, doing things like changing your tires or wheels, uh, doing an oil change, things that BMW owners do themselves at home is basically impossible. Um, so we're going to be adding one. And what we have today is the SW Motec low suspension center stand, the F750 GS. Here's everything I think we're going to need, including the instruction manual. Uh, you can buy this in the USA from Twisted Throttle, but I didn't buy from them because they didn't have it in stock. For like the last six months i decided to finally order from the europe so i bought it from sd moto parts it took about a month to get here due to customs and covid 19 but um here's every part that comes with it including your torque specs and then installation goes like this i'm going through this now so you can pause if you'd like to That's that. So I'm gonna get to this myself and I will come back to you guys in a minute. You've got the stand, you've got all kinds of little additions to the F750, and you've got this heavy duty bolt kit with some various springs. Should have everything we need. Um, it's gonna be hard to install because this spring is really heavy duty. So we'll just have to see how it goes. And um, so we are starting with step one, which is right here. Everything is laid out right down here with our Loctite and our tools. Also, Heather's here in the background. Hello. Um, so the way this is diagrammed out is uh, these two uh, top bolts are supposed to have medium strength Loctite with 25 newton meters of torque. The bottom ones are going to be tightened down with 46 newton meters of torque and um, also medium strength Loctite. So that's going to go right into here, I think. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and do that now. I've got a brand new Weira toolkit for this video. This is the same Allen I had before, but it is stainless steel. Should be a little bit nicer. Plus I had lost my size four, so needed to buy a new one anyway. So this is your size five Allen key for this, for the front bolts and the back ones is gonna be, and for now we're just going to uh, put them in there finger tight. We'll torque them down later. So for the rear, the orientation is as so. So we're going to put this into here, apply a little bit of Loctite. Same thing, just finger tight for now. We'll torque all this stuff down later. Okay, sweet. Step one is done. Now we're switching to the other side. Well, for step two, it's a little invasive. See all these removals? They're saying to remove this bolt up here, down here. Also removing this bolt here, I think. and like three others. One, two, three. That seems a little invasive. Let's think about this a little bit more. They weren't kidding. <laughs> You're removing this whole plate as if you were gonna be changing out the, sh the chain, basically. It's basically like removing this, changing out the chain. So what I've done is I've put the bike against the wall here so that the side stand is off the ground. Only that I'm not quite sure the severity of this, this would be a much easier if I had a center stand, but that's the whole point of this video. Just so you guys know, uh, this lower bolt here is a T50. This bolt here, <laughs> it's a T60. So uh, yeah, you're gonna need to purchase, most of you don't have one of these, um, so you're gonna need to purchase a T60. The rest of these are like T45s and T40s, but T50 and T60 at least, I had to the Baker bar because this thing is in there. T50s? here, here, uh, and back here. This would be a T40. This is a T30 up top. Up there you can see it was the plastic one holding there. Uh, this was a T50 as well. This is a T60 on the front and on the rear, a, uh, a, it was a 13 mil um, uh, wrench on the rear. There's a nut on the back and it's sticking out right there as you can see. On the back side of this, is uh, a small thin washer, so keep that in place, kind of keep these two intact. Uh, this on the front here is gonna be a 
T30, this little bit here holding the, um, the lock in for the shifter. Uh, I think that covers it. Um, oh, and this here, oh, this is a bastard. This is probably torqued, I would imagine, at 110 or 130 newton meters. Um, and what just happened is I kind of saw a drop occur, and I'm kind of concerned that maybe something bad can happen if I keep unscrewing, but I could be wrong here. See, holding one side of the swing arm on, look at that bolt. That's a big one. There's no um, thread locker on it, which is interesting. Yeah, this just comes off now. Now this is going to start coming loose now. So we've got this. So we can now grab this and pull this off its hinge. You're going to have your uh, oil entry kind of in the way. So loosen this bolt out and shimmy it off. And then try to keep all these bolts back in their holes. And if one falls out, put it right back in where it came from. Do not, uh, do not lose track of where those bolts went. And in the same light, we're putting this back in its hole here. We're putting this washer back on the back of the shifter. The next instructions indicate that um, this bolt needs to come out. This bolt is also, by the way, a T50. Yeah, so right now, the kickstand is only supported by like this, I think. This little Allen right here, uh, which by the way, is only something that's there because of the GV crash bar. So you'll probably have a Torx here. My point is, instead of three uh, bolts holding this kickstand uh, mount in place, you only have one. So I do think it's best that what I did was leaning against the wall or having a friend hold it because uh, with this kickstand only having one bolt holding it in, you're putting a lot of pressure on that one bolt and it could bend. So I think pushing this F750GS, leaning against a wall or having a friend hold it upright for a bit, um, or if you, have a if you have a center stand, jacking up on a floor jack is the best way to do this because I really don't want to put a lot of pressure on this. I mean, it's already, I, I, I don't know, I just don't trust it. So just, just my advice is to don't let this thing hang out on the kickstand while you're doing this work. Oh, we're getting rid of this guy. Ha! Huh. So this guy's coming out. So what SA1 has done, done is they've actually replaced this thing here, which is butting up against your um, your chain guard. So what I did was I loosened up with an M8, the, uh, the other side of the GV crash bar here, which probably is gonna be a Torx in your case. You'll notice in the back side of this holder, there's a little pin right there and that pin is held in there. So in order to get that loose, I just had to um, loosen this off a little bit again. Another reason why this is off the ground and not um, resting the rate, but resting the weight, it was only a half turn. So we're just gonna torque this back down to its old spot. All right, so here is how it should look when you're done with this step. Basically just this is holding this into here. Uh, this is a different bolt than what BMW gave you. BMW gave you this one, and uh, this came out. So this is going to be a spare bolt. It's like four bucks a pop, so save it. And then uh, just get this all buttoned back up. Again, we're just barely holding on here. Uh, tighten this back down, and then we're going to basically reattach the um, the stock uh, cover. All right. Um, this upper bolt up here does have thread locker on it from the factory, so I reapply medium Loctite. The rest of these bolts don't have any thread locker on them except for the one that SW Motec fixed me, which came to the middle of this bracket. It's behind here. And then this uh, 35, yeah, M10 by 35, which also has the washer SW Motec and also asks for medium strength Loctite. The reason why they don't reuse the factory bolt that goes down here is because it's not long enough to go through here and the bracket behind it. So if you did your job correctly, I did my job correctly. This should sneak right through there. Mm, it's a little bit low. So what I have to do is I'm gonna have to, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> problems. <laughs> um, the bolt under here, the middle of this black bracket is actually, um, the opening for the bolt is a little bit larger than the bolt diameter. Um, so I'm going to take a rubber mallet bang up on this a little bit and get this just a, like a, literally a smidge higher. Now to actually install the center stand, which is this instruction here, we're gonna be using some of the remaining bolts in order to assemble this. And this is gonna get married up to the empty center holes that we have on both sides that's still free. After that, they do say to use some grease. I'm gonna use some standard uh, engine grease. And then uh, after that, installing the spring, which they say is helped by having a special tool. But I have a way to install center stand springs that I think will work for you at home without needing to pay an extra 10 or 20 bucks for the SW Motec solution, which 
would make it easier. So we'll see if I need it. Here's our diagram for how it all comes together. So this is the driver's side, passenger side. You've got a small inmate here backed by a washer. On the other side, you've got the, um, the flanged bit right here, number 14. So 14, 13, and finally 16. Other side, you've got part number 18. And then here you have another 14, then a 17, and then a 15. And I also applied grease on both sides. You'll see you'll have some excess grease here. Get rid of that because you're gonna need to use some Loctite to get this tightened down. So when you're installing this, grab your um, paper towel and clean the grease, excess grease off the end of these threads here. Let's get ready to install. Given how low this 750 is, this is probably the best angle I can get for you guys. There's our empty hole right over there and our other empty hole right here. So I'm putting the center stand in carefully. I've got my long eight M8 Allen. Grab this one and go ahead and thread this in. Just a couple of turns is good. This is hard to do while I'm filming. And same thing, screw that in. And these are supposed to go to, you guessed it, 40 newton meters. But I'm not gonna tighten them down just yet because uh, I want to uh, get the spring in place. So we're just gonna lightly tighten, tighten them up. Oh man, that is low to the ground, but Hey, it's a low suspension GS and this thing will never go off road. So I don't throw this guy right here. That makes it a whole little bit easier. I still don't know which one of these to use though. One's big, one's small. Let's try the smaller one first. So it's saying that this goes in like this and then this goes down to here. Oh, that's not that far at all. One thing I did do. So on this side, you can see this bolt thread on the middle comes out a couple of threads or one thread. On the other side, it doesn't. You can see how it's not sticking all the way out. They could have used a longer bolt on this side. So what I did was I applied um, high strength thread locker uh, to something. Anyway, the high strength stuff, the red stuff, not the blue stuff. Um, because I don't want that backing out ever. And so um, torque to 40 newton meters. I also applied high strength, this bolt right here, the one they said torque to 40 that wouldn't work because it's there's no way, there's no way to do that. So medium strength and everything except for those three. But you can see you actually are giving up quite a bit of ground clearance. There's your chain and there's your, uh, the bottom of your kickstand, the metal silver right there. This takes away ground clearance on a lower F750 GS. This actually kind of makes the, 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 the rear, I guess, rake of this bike, I don't know what off-roading terms there are, um, worse off. So if you do any off-roading at all and you're on a load F, lowered F750 GS, this is going to get in the way. And I could totally understand now why BMW forego, forewent, foregone, left out the um, center stand. But we wanted it for service and maintenance and roadside repairs. And Heather has no plans of leaving uh, pavement. If anything, it'll be unpaved dirt roads, but not trails. And so for her... Uh, the center stand was more important than the um, the ground clearance, which hopefully this won't ever be a problem. But we'll have to see, right? If she starts scraping, you know, speed bumps and stuff, then different situation. But fitment is perfect. I would have loved to see a spacer here. Hold on. One second. <sighs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> I was, hold on, I was like... What is the spare spacer for? What the hell, man? Hey guys, spare, spare spacer goes behind this bolt. See, it's right behind there. <laughs> okay, 40 newton meters of that bolt. Don't worry about torquing it down too much because there's a spacer behind it. That spacer, little sneaky bastard snuck in here. Where is it? Right there, number 12, boom, dummy. Okay, this is no longer a problem. <laughs> but um, I would like to see that lower center stand bolt be a little bit longer. See how it comes, doesn't come all the way through. Uh, easy fix though, just buy the right bolt. But getting this thing off the center stand is super easy. I like it. I like it a lot. So great job, SW Motec. Uh, I paid full price for this. Ride safe and uh, take care.